Well, good evening everyone. This is Handlock Steve wishing you a very pleasant evening and welcome back to my channel. And uh, folks, I'll tell you, I am literally exhausted by the twists and turns that have been taken on this trip to Brexit. And uh, it has been absolutely astounding ever since uh, Boris Johnson has taken over the Prime Ministership of the Conservative Party. Uh, everybody has done everything that they possibly can to block the whole Brexit deal. Uh, Boris Johnson has now prorogued government. The Queen uh, called an end to government on the 9th of September. And so uh, there is a time out there. But before that, uh, the MPs voted against a snap election. And uh, this is probably the first time in the history of any government that a minority government has not jumped at the opportunity of an election when called. And of course the reason for that we now know is that uh, Jeremy Corbyn is absolutely dragging in the polls. Uh, and between the Conservative Party and the Brexit Party, uh, Labour would be absolutely pounded. Uh, they are around about 25 in the uh, poll standings, where the Conservatives are up around about 35. Uh, that is quite a lead. And of course Jeremy Corbyn is not a particularly well-liked uh, leader anyways. And um, But one of the things that's really annoying me, I saw uh, an article today in the Globe and Mail, and I think I'm going to start calling this paper The Globalist and Mail, uh, because they absolutely pounded Boris Johnson, and they came out and said that uh, the highest court had announced that um, Boris Johnson was uh, had illegally prorogued government and had lied to the Queen about the reason for proroguing government. And when you go through uh, this article, you know you find out that that's actually not the case. But the first, I don't know, the first third of the column is just taken up with pounding Boris Johnson and what an absolute mess that he has made of the situation over Brexit. And um, you know, really, the mess was already there. It was a mess that he inherited. And I might add here uh, that when David Cameron called the Brexit referendum, which was a platform promise of the Conservative government. and uh, But the Conservative government under David Cameron was so cocky that they didn't even plan for Brexit. They were so certain that they would win the vote, which kind of uh, smells a little bit to me that there might have been some kind of fix in there. Because, I mean, let's face it, how do you get that cocky? But to not prepare for an eventual Brexit situation and then for the Brexiteers to win that vote by 52% is absolutely staggering. Uh, you know, when you think about it, if there was some kind of uh, rigging going on. And I certainly wouldn't put that above the government or the EU because these people will cheat at any opportunity. And we've seen that. We've seen how they interfere with these kind of things. So, OK, the snap election was turned down and then uh, they secured a vote to force Boris Johnson uh, to not leave Europe without a deal. And of course that takes away any negotiating uh, position that they might have. Uh, you know, what, what, what's your leverage? What, what are you going to negotiate with if you have to leave with a deal? So Boris Johnson lays out a deal. The EU says, no, we don't like that. OK, you don't have a deal. Therefore, you have no Brexit. And this will go on and on and on and on. Uh, now, Boris Johnson has said that he will not ask for an extension and France, the, the French negotiator, has also said that they will not allow an extension. So October 31st is still the deadline. Now, I believe that no matter what happens in the British Parliament, no matter what decisions they make, uh, if they can't get an extension, then Brexit will happen as the default date on October the 31st. Anyway, let's just pop over and take a look at these couple of articles that I found and then we'll come back and I'll do a quick wrap up. Okie dokie, here we go. Uh, I'm going to start with this now from the Globe and Mail. Boris Johnson denies lying to the Queen over Brexit crisis. Just listen to the rhetoric here. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson on Thursday denied lying to the Queen over the reasons for suspending the Parliament after a court ruled his decision was unlawful and opponents called for lawmakers to be recalled to discuss Brexit. Since Mr Johnson won the top job in July, Britain's Brexit crisis has spun more furiously, leaving investors and allies bewildered by an array of decisions that have pushed the once stable political system to its limits. 
Parliament was prorogued on Monday until October the 14th, a move Mr Johnson's opponents said was designed to thwart their attempts to scrutinise his plans for leaving the European Union and to allow him to push through Brexit on October the 31st with or without a deal to smooth the United Kingdom's departure. And which highest court? Oh, Scotland's highest court of appeal ruled on Wednesday that the suspension was not lawful and was intended to stymie lawmakers, prompting opponents to question whether Mr Johnson had lied to the Queen, who must formally order the prorogation. Absolutely not, Mr Johnson said when asked by a TV reporter if he had misled the Queen, who is the world's longest reigning monarch and is widely respected for more than 67 years of service during which she has stayed above the fray of politics. OK, so uh, Scotland's highest court. Well, we all know that Scotland are Remainers. They want to stay in the EU. So, of course, their highest court of appeal would rule that it was unlawful. But here you go. What does it say here? High court rules on suspension of Parliament case. This is from Al Jazeera. Britain's high court rejected a claim that Johnson was acting unlawfully by suspending Parliament for several weeks ahead of the country's scheduled departure from the EU. Transparency campaigner Gina Miller took the government to court in a bid to stop the suspension scheduled for next week. High Court judges ruled against her but said the case could be appealed to the Supreme Court. The top court is due to hear the case on September the 17th. And of course that's a little late in the day, uh, but I suspect that the Supreme Court will agree with the High Court because these are the same judges and they all are reading the same set of rules. So this was written by the Globe and Mail to give you the impression that Boris Johnson lied to the Queen and acted illegally. And of course this is obviously untrue as we can see here. Did the Globe and Mail not read this article that I'm reading? Did they not know that Britain's High Court rejected a claim? So there you go. You can't always believe what you read in leading newspapers. Uh, their unconscious bias is showing terribly. And I hear from Al Jazeera again, French FM foreign minister says no to Brexit delay in current circumstances. French foreign minister Jean-Yves Le Drian uh, rejected the prospect of any further delay to Britain's exit from the EU amid ongoing political chaos in the UK. In the current circumstances, it's no. We are not going to go through this every three months, Le Drian said on Le Grand Rendezvous Europe. The British say that they want to put forward other solutions, alternative arrangements so they can leave, but we have not seen them, and so it is no, he added. They have to tell us what they want. All 28 EU member states must approve any further delay to Brexit. Johnson will not seek Brexit delay. Johnson is sticking to his Brexit plan and will not seek a delay to Britain's departure from the EU at a summit next month, two ministers said, despite the latest resignation from his government. After Work and Pensions Minister Amber Rudd quit late on Saudi over his Brexit policy, Foreign Minister Dominic Raab and Finance Minister Sajid Javid said Johnson was determined to keep to the plan and to leave the EU by October 31st with or without a divorce deal. The Prime Minister will go to the Council meeting on the 17th and 18th of October. He'll be trying to strike a deal. He absolutely will not be asking for an extension in that meeting, Javid told the BBC. And this from The Guardian. Tories extend lead over Labour to 10 points despite chaotic week. More than half of all Leave voters are now planning to vote for Boris Johnson. The Conservatives have extended the lead over Labour as pro-Brexit voters return to the party, according to the latest opinion poll for The Observer. Despite a week of political chaos that has seen Boris Johnson purge the party of 21 MPs who opposed his plans, the Tories recorded a 10-point lead over Labour. For the first time since March, more than half, 53% of Leave voters, now intend to vote Conservative. Almost half of all voters, 46%, now think the Conservative Party has in effect become the Brexit Party. Conservatives are up three points to 35% of the vote, while the Brexit Party is down three points to 13% of the vote, and the Liberal Democrats are up two points to 17%, with Labour down one point to 25%. Opinion said there was a considerable amount of voter churn, with only the Lib Dems retaining an overwhelming proportion of their vote from the last election. 
83% of the 2017 Lib Dems would vote for the party again. Both the Conservatives and Labour are on track to lose votes to the Lib Dems among their Remainer wing and lose votes to the Brexit party from their Leave wing. For the first time since the 2017 general election, opinion said it was recording a direct shift in votes between the two major parties. Just over a fifth, 22% of Labour Leave voters are now intending to vote Conservative. Johnson's personal ratings have been dented after his bruising week in the Commons. Now only just over a third, 36%, think he'll be the best Prime Minister, down from 41% last month. However, Jeremy Corbyn is not benefiting from Johnson's troubles. Only 16% say he would be the best Prime Minister. So you can see, uh, Jeremy Corbyn is not popular, he is trailing the Conservatives, and he would be sure to lose an election should one be called. And that, my friends, is why he is stalling and delaying, even though he was begging for an election all through Theresa May's reign as leader of the Conservatives. This guy twists and turns and blows in every direction that the wind blows in. Okay, so here you see the current state of the parties, Conservative with 288 seats and Labour with 247 seats. Uh, Independent have 35 seats, Scottish National Party have 35 seats. If Jeremy Corbyn could convince the Independent Party and the Scottish National Party to side with Labour, he could form a majority government. However, most of the independents are from the Labour Party and they do not like Jeremy Corbyn, so I don't think that they would go back. Maybe Scottish National Party and the Lib Dems? They only need 41 seats to draw even. So the Scottish National Party and the Lib Dems would easily form a majority government. But will that happen? We don't know. It's just a possibility. The numbers are there. The numbers are definitely there. And uh, here from Al Jazeera again, Boris Johnson defeated again, no snap UK election. Suffering a third defeat in the House of Commons in two days, Boris Johnson's Brexit plans lie in disarray. For the third time in two days, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has suffered a major parliamentary defeat as his bid to call an election next month was easily thwarted late on Wednesday. Johnson's Conservative Party failed to win the two-thirds majority needed to call a snap election mustering only 298 of the 434 votes required. Given the size of the rebellion and the subsequent lack of numbers on the government's benches, most opponents abstained from voting, with just 56 opposition politicians actively opposing his bid to head to the polls in coming weeks. After the vote went badly against him, he chided opposition Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn before MPs. I think Corbyn has become the first opposition leader in the history of our country to refuse the invitation to head a general election, said Johnson. I can only speculate as to the reasons behind his hesitation. The obvious conclusion is, I'm afraid, that he does not think he will win. So I think that we can all see uh, the really underhanded way in which uh, these parties are behaving. Certainly the 21 rebels within the Conservative Party itself, uh, they have been fired, they've lost all status as Conservatives and they're now sitting as independents. Uh, but Jeremy Corbyn, and I'm sure that during this prorogation, and when you look at the ratio of seats, uh, as you saw, it is quite possible for Jeremy Corbyn to form a majority government. Uh, if he could get the Liberal Democrats and the Independents to side with him, he could form a majority government. And he may just do that. I, I, I'm absolutely 100% certain that prorogation, you know, they said that it's silenced MPs, but I, I'm, they're not silenced. That certainly the leaders of each party uh, will be going around making deals and shoring up their support. And of course, now Nigel Farage has come out with the Brexit party and said that the way they can get this deal done, uh, because he's absolutely certain that there will be a snap election, but that Nigel Farage and his Brexit party have offered to cooperate with the Conservatives if they're truly in for a Brexit uh, no deal exit. And this, the way this will work is that um, the Brexit party will run candidates uh, in Labour ridings that have high numbers of Brexit voters. And you have to remember, 22% of Labour's voters voted for Brexit. That's a significant number of your voters who are not happy, and they would vote immediately 
for Brexit. And of course, there is a high number of voters who said, uh, or, or the 52% has said they will vote Conservative in the election. And of course, this is why Jeremy Corbyn is scared to death of having an election. But if Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson can get together, uh, there will eventually be an election and Jeremy Corbyn cannot hold us off forever. What is most incredible to me is the number of people and the number of avenues that are opposing Brexit. And uh, as far as I can see, the people who are opposing are globalists. And uh, of course, any kind of sense of independence, any kind of sovereignty is not part of the globalist plan. And, uh, and of course, really, we should never give up our sovereignty or our independence. And we should never give up our right to vote in or vote out a government. Uh, however ineffectual or rigged we might think the system is, it is, at this point in time, the only way that we have of demonstrating our favour or disfavour for the government in power and the decisions that they're making on our behalf. And at the very least, we must never give that away and we certainly must never hand it over to unelected officials to make decisions on our behalf. Remember, I'm going to remind you as many times as they can, we're the owners. You and I, all of us, we are the owners. Without our support and without our money, there would be no government. Okay, so last time I went into a restaurant, the waiter did not tell me what I was going to have for my meal. I told the waiter, and you know why? Because I'm paying the bill. And as long as we remember that, uh, you will act, just, just remember that when you're dealing with these people and you'll behave differently towards the whole thing. They literally are, and that's why they're called civil servants. They work for us. We pay all of their wages, we pay all of the bills, everything. So we have the right to speak up and that should never ever ever be taken away from us. But you can see, like I say, all these different avenues all working against the democratic decision that was taken over Brexit. And of course if they were concerned because it was a big decision for England, uh, they should have made it. 55% of the vote is the winning tally or 60%, but they didn't. It was 50 plus 1. Uh, Britain voted to leave the EU. This has been delayed for three years. It's been discussed for three years and still no resolution has taken place. I certainly don't blame Boris Johnson for proroguing government because you can't get anything done. You, you can just see what's happening. You can just see the delaying tactics uh, that are going on and we will never pull out. And so you have to do things like proroguing government just to allow the government and the Prime Minister to actually sit down and focus on this deal without all of these silly interferences and the whining and the crying over how unfair it is. And as I say, that's why I keep referring back to we had a vote. It was a fair vote. We all agreed on the outcome of the vote. The, the winner would take all. And that's that and all about it. That's fair. It was decided. We all accepted that result. Except now that the Remainers have lost, we can't accept the result. We have to redo it again. Anyway, who knows what will happen in the next 48 days uh, before October 31st and uh, the Queen's speech. Right now, I, I wouldn't be surprised at anything happening. So there's all kinds of problems on this path here and uh, I will be sitting watching with bated breath as I'm sure you will to see what happens on the 14th of October at the Queen's speech and Parliament reopens and that is a scant 17 days prior to October 31st. So I will try and keep you appraised of as much as I'm finding out from my researches and um, if you've enjoyed this video, please comment, like and subscribe below. And in the meantime, this is Hound Dog Steve signing off, wishing you a very pleasant evening and we'll talk to you very, very shortly. You take care now. See ya. Bye.